Hello and welcome to the episode number 5 of Sit Sip and Share by Yasin Oz and we are celebrating mobility and cultural exchange across the globe during the Erasmus days. Thank you so much Liz for being our special guest the godmother of Yasin Oz. So could you share the story of how your journey with Yasin Oz began and what inspired you to become deeply involved with Yasin? So I uh came to NMU in 2017 and I already knew at the moment I arrived that I wanted an international way of life because I already had international friends from high school and I was very very uh about continuing an international life. Mm-hmm. I also did a year cultural program in the US in Disney where I had a lot of international friends and I fell in love with the international life. So before i joined esnos i actually joined as the international officer of student parliament at an mbu at an mbu i was extremely lucky to be elected because uh i didn't know what i was going to but i knew that i wanted to partake in the international life and make the international life better for the international students and there i met esnos esnos was a very It was an organization that struggled a lot with staying afloat mm-hmm. and they needed a lot of external help with um like managing their organization. And so I did I held the elections on behalf of ESNOS as international officer. And this was a year in 2017. 2017. Yeah. I arrived in 2016, sorry. <laughs> and um and then after I finished my mandate as international officer, I was like I need to stay in ESN because this organization is the one that creates the bridges between the Norwegians and the international students and I just want to be part of that and they're struggling and I th- I think maybe I could help out here and do something good with the section and uh, so a uh, cold February evening uh in 2018 after my mandate fi- the other mandate finished i met with the current president of esnos and it was just four people who met to okay. the meeting that was the election only four people only four people uh we were sitting in the hallway we were like okay so are we going to do this or not and we say we're going to do this we're we're going to do this and we worked really hard the first few months to recruit more people and eventually we had like seven people uh that was in our board and then we started like slowly creating uh some sort of basement for the organization and um i uh was going to go on exchange myself in uh, just like a few months after like in the fall semester okay so it was very important to me to do as much as possible for the foundation of the organization before i left and uh if we held uh elections the day before a left an exchange so i had the transition meetings with the new board while over there in italy so you were doing an exchange and helping the section back yes. in and view yes it was uh it it was a lot of hard work uh creating all these like transition documents right. making the connections and helping them get afloat but then when i came back from my exchange they wanted me back into the organization so I joined again as advisor this time as an advisor yes and that's when uh and that's when I met uh, uh he's a Norway level because we <laughs> we had just gotten off our feet as a section mm-hmm. and then we said oh we're going to host a national assembly in Oslo that's a great idea it was really tough but we managed really well and that's when I was introduced to the in- to the national level and the history of that started wow wow I think on behalf of everyone who gets benefited from ESN OS from all these years and people who are currently working in the board of ESN OS I should say that we are very grateful that you didn't let the organization die in 2018 when it was only 4 and if we can talk about the numbers this mandate when we had the election the room was full and I know the number is 62 people who came for the elections so we can do the esn appreciation because this is really huge and Thank you have you. so many active members and yes. so many in the organization itself it's just it's mind blowing to me but yeah all thanks to you that the sunshine that esn os needed 
Perfect. Before we move to the next section, what's your favorite cozy beverage that you would like to enjoy on an autumn evening in Norway? I prefer tea year round. Okay. I'm very much I love tea. Oh, all the teas. But uh, yes, tea and uh, specifically like maybe fruity-ish in the um, in the fall and then more wintry flavors towards the winter. We do have a lot of options for the tea, but then Maybe I should prepare you the one that you just described, the fruity. We have four options in this one. Maybe you can pick. I think we can go with the blue fruits. Perfect. Blue fruits. I think I will accompany you with the same flavor. Right, now that we have our favorite beverage, the tea, the fruity flavor for this beautiful autumn season in Norway, we can move on to our next section, which is... So your exchange semester, as you mentioned, that you went to an exchange in the fall of 2018? Yes. Yes. So, must have been quite an adventure. What were some of your most memorable moments during your time there? And maybe how did it shape your perspective on international experience? Right, so uh, I was in Padova, which is one of the larger um, universities for international students in Italy. Also, coincidentally, one of the strongest sections present in Italy, which is Padova. Padova. Yes, and Padova is currently hosting a huge regional uh, training event this weekend. So um, they're a very, very solid section. And when I got there, I was uh, immediately immersed into the international life because they would welcome us as soon as we get there. And we got the card, we got the welcome tours. Uh, the welcome events, the welcome parties, the welcome ceremony. It was very much uh, clear that these uh, these Italian students were so invested into making us the international people have a really good time while being present. And um, there was a lot of great events, a lot of great activities, and a lot of the things I experienced was through ESN. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. And and uh, they hosted this trip to several cities around uh, the area of Padova and towards the mountains, the, the Dolomites, and I just remember it was such a great event, the itinerary was so nice, we visited um, we visited two distilleries which make grappa, we got to taste it, and <laughs> we also visited um, a castle, went for a tour in, in uh, Trento in the north, and it was just like the view was amazing and the people was amazing and they also another thing i remember really well is this event we had where they got people to come and talk to us and have like a seminar about mafia because organized crime is something we always think about when we think about italy and it just shattered all of my um prejudices about it because i had to like you always heard about the godfather in um, movies and so on but it really like they explained it in such a way that it was quite understandable and and I was like oh I need to make some uh, I need to make some changes to my prejudices here because like obviously I've been a bit wrong about this and it was very I just remember it as an event that was like really um, like impactful in the way like yes they host a lot of cool parties but this event in particular was like something to educate us and then of course like I have a, a lot of international friends still from there and a lot of Italian friends as well and it's just this this feeling of being in a community with people who are like-minded it's absolutely priceless wow I can I mean and this happened five years ago and I can still feel that you have all these memories so strong or so fresh As a godmother of years and us, what advice do you give like to new students embarking on their exchange journeys or international journeys? Hmm. Yes, yeah, so going on exchange to another country, doing something that is outside your comfort zone is a key thing to evolve as a person. We will learn a lot of hard skills in school, we'll learn theory, we'll learn get practical skills and so on your ability to withstand and adapt to change 
you can only develop by actually seeking a change. And going on exchange is a way to seek change. You will have to figure out your life by yourself. Where are you going to live? Where are you going to be with? Where are you going to go? All of these things will help you towards the future in your life, but also like the world we're approaching will be more changing than ever before. And it's a skill that will be vital for us in the future, I very much believe. And it's going to be like the experience of going exchange is very beneficial for you and for the world around you. And you'll also have memories for life, but also changed mindset. You will have instead of just like having like your small group of friends, let's say, or like your buddies from your own country, you're going to be part of a more global family and you'll feel like a world citizen. Globetrotter. <laughs> you feel more like you belong and have a part in this world in a different way. I believe you will if you never seek this kind of change and try to explore the world around you. And going on exchange is a very different reality than just going on vacation. It's immersing yourself into another society which will make changes in you that you will appreciate for the rest of your life. I couldn't agree more because all that you just said, I am experiencing all this from last one year since I'm not an exchange student, so I'm an international student, but still it's it gave me even more chance to be like indulge myself into the new culture, to the new routines. Yeah. Even though uh, I was I mean I I thought that I'm more adaptable because my father was in military so I was moving to different places in India but coming to a new country it it tests you yeah. totally. I think many of our viewers who are watching this interview they will really appreciate you for these motivating words and many will make their minds for an exchange semester or a full degree elsewhere of course yes yes any yes. sort of student mobility is really 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 good we can move on to our next section so currently serving as a regional coordinator for northern esn sections and procedural auditor for esn norway your responsibilities i'm sure are very vast so how do you manage these roles and contribute to enhancing the international student experience and what challenges have you overcome in these positions well these positions is kind of like uh, sort of when you're kind of stepping back a little bit because you enter a role that is more advisory mm -hmm. and I have had more active roles I was president of East Norway for two years during the pandemic and uh, also the vice president and I had now I'm like the one giving advices to others and ensuring things are going the way it's supposed to do um, how I manage it all I mean I find a lot of motivation in it so whenever I see the impact for the events that the sections do my own home sections other easy sections other national organizations and so on I'm just filled with so much pride and I'm just so happy to see like their impact on society and it just motivates me a lot to know that in this organization there's so many people who are like-minded ESN is when I didn't want to let go of an international life ESN is the way for me to keep an international life maybe forever we'll see <laughs> um, at times it will be challenging of course but life is always like this and learn to overcome uh, these kind of challenges and what I've learned is um, the perseverance like to not give up if you feel like there is an opportunity or chance that this will be, get better mm -hmm. don't give up a little bit by little bit it will get better you will see the fruits of your label of your labor eventually it might take a bit of time, but you will see the fruits of it if you manage to if you manage to push through with it. And uh, of course, I also learned uh, how important it is to balance your life. So ESN is not my whole life; uh, it's a huge part of my life. But also finding time to finding time to um, like wind down, relax, and and uh, you know call your mom every now and then it's quite important you know but it's a it's a 
it's like it's a challenge this way and you'll figure it out and it's like this for every student orientation i believe that's true we'll i think i have so much to learn from you as a leader because every now and often i get asked like you are involved so much with esn and many other activities how do you manage all this life but as you rightly mentioned that uh being part of esn since we have a lot of workshops happening for the whole year we get these trainings how to manage our time how to manage our personal and esn life i think all these things when we are attached with esn they just somehow every piece fall in their own places slowly and eventually yeah and i think like it's it's important that you're part of something that gives you joy and if it doesn't give you joy you're not going to find the, the love to do it right True. but with esn it's like you're okay with spending time with it because it gives you so much back it gives you this sense of community the feeling of belonging all of these things and it's so worth it always so worth the it. more i do the more energy i get to do it exactly more. and exactly. i always answer this that esn is kind of my drug <laughs> <laughs> it do be like that so maybe in 5 years you'll be in the original coordinator <laughs> Uh, I have another thing to ask you. Could you share like a proud moment or achievement from your work in these roles that made like a significant impact on the student community? I think it's not a specific moment. Uh but for me like and it's not so easy to like um, place, but for me working through the pandemic at the time it was really challenging for the student organizations to survive to have initiatives to have activities people needed to have something to do because if not you were going to be alone at home, at home and it would be quite lonely and quite depressing frankly for many, many people and what i'm proud of is like that ESN as a network but also is in Norway in our local organization they pushed through the sections they hosted events they went on hikes they organized what they could and they were always updating trying to figure out what they could do to make sure that people who are on exchange during a lockdown would have something to do and find a sense of community and have this um have somewhere to go and for this i am so proud that we managed as an organization to pull through with it and it was challenging of course being the president at the time but it was so worth it when i saw that this made the exchange an international experience for many people much better than the alternative which would just be sitting at home <laughs> you know amazing thank you so much for sharing that we can move on to our next section inspiring norwegian students so being a norwegian student how do you think we can best inspire students from nmbu to go for an exchange to get this international experience i have a lot of thoughts on this <laughs> so i'm um, myself i'm from a very small town in norway we have like 20000 people in the whole municipality uh, and uh, my little town in particular i think we're like a few thousand at max so not a lot of people um and uh, for me it can be like i can understand that if you're from a small town in norway most norwegians are from smaller areas uh you might not understand the value of going abroad and a lot of norwegians travel a lot with their family they go on a lot of vacations they kind of feel like they have this cultural uh, experiences but i don't think it's enough government is really good at like pushing this uh, these goals of having a government like exchange rate in Norway that's something that they do so it has contributed to um, to this government like behavior um but we have a lot of technical solutions we have the stipends we have the lånekassen we have a lot of really good tools around us like digitalized the process itself and going to exchange is very easy these days right 
technical solutions and our teachers, governments, university telling us to go on exchange is not enough. It is not enough. The key, the key catalyst for getting more people to go on exchange is other students. We need more interaction with the international community currently present at our campuses to motivate more students to go abroad. It's it's um, it's little like the little things. It's just me- meeting international students at a party, for example. You'll start talking to them. Oh, where are you from? How you, how do you like it in Norway? Have you seen the Northern Lights yet? <laughs> Most Norwegians haven't either. <laughs> and and it kind of like these this will snowball into more students understanding like hmm, maybe there is a world outside of Norway. And um, we also need these international students to how to say be highlighted better that we actually use them while they're currently here to show them the world outside with internationalization at home and who better can uh, bring the experience than these international students themselves exactly. to Norway exactly and also the international students want to interact with the Norwegians it's so super important for them to you know be able to go home and say actually I met a bunch of Norwegians too not just the other international students <laughs> and I think uh, one thing is what the university can do when like try to uh, encourage people to go on exchange uh, another thing is being super clear about like the experience you gain from going on student mobility is something you will be able to utilize your whole life these new skills you will learn from going on mobility they will be with you forever and it will make you a great like a better candidate for jobs it will make you your life easier in the future because you're so adaptable to changes it will be much better for you as a person and other like we can have you know, adults telling us that this is true but it's much more impactful when it comes from fellow students international students saying like i learned so much about myself ever since i went to exchange being in norway like of course it's challenging and i don't understand why they're so cold and i don't understand why they talk to me at the party but not in the hallway you know like but also them sharing their experience and the positive parts of their experience how they how much they learned about themselves how they have adapted to their new life situation also will encourage others uh, because it will tell them like you can do it too it is possible it's scary it's supposed to be a bit scary but you can do it i guess also the fun part of it being a scary but you are a big example of that national student stepping out of your comfort zone I have something more that uh, sometimes bother me. Is there any common misconceptions or challenges that Norwegian students face when considering studying abroad? I mean, we talked about how university and these organizations can help them, but how do you help them to navigate these concerns, mm-hmm. misconceptions or challenges that they have in their mind? So I think um, a misconception might be that there's many misconceptions. Of course, like some of them is, oh, this is gonna. as I would at the NMVU. Um, I will not find my people there, it will be far away from home and so on. There's a lot of fears connected to it. But then again, like you won't have the exact same courses and that's kind of the key to it, right? You're gonna have an experience that will differentiate you from everyone else in your class because you will have a different set of experiences. Your courses will look a little different and you will gain experiences that they won't be able to gain because they're not going on exchange. And some misconceptions, I guess, it's like a lot of people are worried about lo- being lonely when abroad, and not quite understanding how am I supposed to immerse myself into a society that maybe doesn't speak that much English, or a, a country where English is the second language, or maybe the third language, and then I'm like, it's also our second language and for most countries this is true like English is not our first language and you don't have to be worried about not speaking very nicely English you can have a Norwegian accent it's totally okay 
uh, they will still understand you. Everyone has an accent. Everyone has an accent, and you I, shouldn't I, be afraid to have one. I think having accents is such a beautiful thing. I mean, if no one has an accent, you cannot differentiate people where they come from. Yeah, it's a nice thing. It's like a flavor to it. I like it. I think it's it yeah. indicates that we're more, you know, diversified. So much for putting like a positive perspective on these fears and concerns. Maybe this will help many Norwegian students considering, or maybe just haven't thought about it yet. And maybe this conversation might help them to plan the exchange semester somewhere. I just want to say like there will be a student organization there to take care of you. There will be. If it's not ESM, there's someone else. But you definitely will be met by some sort of international community that will take care of you. Uh, so don't worry. No. <laughs> We can move on to our next section, which is chill couch chat. So every episode, we ask our guests that if you would like to invite any historical or fictional figure to join us here on our sit sip share episode, who would that be and why? I think actually, uh, I would like to invite a historical figure. Um, I don't read too much fiction, so I'm not quite sure who I would pick. But for historical, I think actually I would pick Gloria Steinem, who is quite a, fem- a famous feminist and one of the uh, one of those who were at the foundation of the liberation movement for women and I would like to talk to her and have a chit chat with her because I mean she like these women they worked with almost nothing and they persevered they pulled through they managed and I think it would be really cool to um, hear like how it was for them and and I just find it very inspiring how they didn't give up they never gave up and they managed they made changes and I find that extremely inspiring I wish you that this moment might come true maybe in future you might have a chance to have an interview like this Nice. And on a relaxing evening, what's your go-to cozy activity or any book that helps you unwind your busy day? I um, like drinking tea <laughs> uh, and watching documentaries. Any documentaries, uh, nature documentaries. Also, in this spooktober season, a lot of true crime okay. and uh, and kind of like podcasts and so on. Uh, and then my most recent um, cozy activity is knitting. I really take it up on knitting, and uh, I find it very, very um, relaxing and exciting. And, th- and now I understand what it means why my grandma is always knitting. I really get it. So my goal is to um, is I will never be as good as her, but I will really want to become a way better knitter. Knit a lot of sweaters. <laughs> Our next section is sit sip share favorites. So listen, do you have like a favorite travel destination that you recommend to everyone and what makes it like special for you? Right. So a lot of people have bucket lists, mm-hmm. right? I also have a bucket list. Uh, it is not consisting of, well, it consists of a bunch of countries and cities. But it's not because of the cities and countries themselves, it's because of the people I know who live there. So my goal is to visit all my international friends all over the world. And I have friends all over the world, uh, like from Asia, the US, Africa, all over Europe and so on. And my goal is to visit all of them eventually in my lifetime. And the next one I am aiming for is Japan. So uh, I don't have a favorite place to visit. like. There's a lot of really beautiful cities and beautiful countries around the world, but for me, it's the people that makes it special, and this is why I want to go visit all of them. Amazing, amazing. So it's the people that are attracting you to these countries or these cities. Yes, and they will be the best guides. You know, they will be the best ones to show you the country. Of course. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to like cozy evenings, do you have a favorite playlist or type of music that you? while sipping your favorite tea? Mm, 
I am kind of fond of like, I have like two kind of vibes. It's either um, like this um, uh, like acoustic versions of popular songs. Instrumental. Yeah, it could be instrumental, like classical interpretations of pop songs like Barbie Girl, and it's just really relaxing. Um, I also have like a. I am also very fond of sea shanties. I find them very calming. So maybe it's like a traveler thing. I don't know, but I just find it very calming. I will try to find something from your favorites <laughs> to put it as a background music for this episode. <laughs> And the next section is our future aspirations. So looking ahead, what are your future aspirations both within the realm of ESN and beyond? Any exciting projects or dreams you would like to pursue? Yeah, so I want to become a parasitologist. I'm a biologist by my bachelor's and my master's. My master's I'm gonna hand it in in February. And my my dream is to become a parasitologist like a Parasit- uh, it's like parasites in a lot of different animals, let's say, and the, some are microscopic and so on. And um, this is just a field I really much fell in love with. And I would like to, how does it like, invest more of my um, you know, skills into that field as well. Maybe host a huge parasitic conference one day. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Um, and Good luck for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, to stay in an international life uh, I think that's the life I need to have to have a good life I would like I want to travel but I also want to just have international people around me it just feels more natural to me and for ESN in particular um, I am now entering like this is my last year as regional coordinator in the spring I'll finish that and then it will be my last like I'll have another mandate as procedural auditor most likely for ESN Norway and then my uh, dream for ESN I especially was asked about this yesterday by some other uh, old ESN dinosaurs <laughs> uh, I would like to get into the alumni network for the ESN Norway you don't have one? No. not really no and I would really like for us to connect center to those aware and be able to like utilize the resources the alumni people are and be able to reconnect with all the ES centers when you know in 10 years we feel maybe life has been been a bit overwhelming and we can like share the memories of our time in this network how great it was and yeah I'm just looking forward to that because I can feel how much energy that from the alumni to the newer ESNers. Sometimes in the beginning, ESNers are not motivated in much or they don't as much of ESN as the alumni is as well. That's a wonderful idea. I really like to like... Um, so there's gonna be ESN reunions happening in coming years. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I would very much like for that to happen and I would be up for the challenge. So yeah, I, I think that would be... Um, Good for good for the alumni, good for the newbies. Okay, so now it's the time for the rapid fire. Yes. This is gonna be three sections. The favorite yes in memory. The first uh, physical national assembly after pandemic. Yes in family or yes in adventures. You have to pick one. Yes in family. Craziest yes in event. Yes in. Uh, Erasmus Generation meeting in Portugal. A thousand ESNers in one city. A thousand? Yep. <laughs> Best ESN workshop? Time management. Nice. I think I need that. <laughs> nice. Now is our novice section. Northern Lights or Midnight Sun? Northern Lights. Fjords or mountains? In Norway, you can have both actually at the same time. <laughs> That's the perks of it, but uh, fjords. Traditional cuisine or modern cuisine? Modern. Winter themed or summer hiking? Summer hiking. Italy, pizza or pasta? Pasta. Rome or Venice? They're both really crowded, but Venice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Italian gelato or espresso? Gelato. Art galleries or historic ruins? 
the striker is? Italian fashion or Italian architecture? Italian fashion. Nice. And up next we have a special section which is sending a message. So before we conclude our talk, if you could send a message back in time to your younger self, what advice or encouragement would you offer to the Liz who has just started her international journey? you put in you're going to see how you're going to be able to see how it turns out and you're going to be mindful about it just like do not give up you're going to make a change believe in yourself believe in yourself in short and last but not least every episode we gift our guest speakers some of our ESN merchandise but since that you already have ESN beanie ESN diary <laughs> so we have something special for you and here it is our new ESN OS active member t-shirt <laughs> nice. oh my god you have Thank one more you. that is beautiful <laughs> Look at that! And huge shout out to Yael who designed this ESN active yeah, number. Your fantastic exchange starts here. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much for your inspiring story and experiences with ESN abroad in Italy. And I'm sure this episode is going to inspire many to go for an exchange. Even I'm inspired although I don't have enough time left in my master's <laughs> degree but any final thoughts or message you would like to share with our viewers tap into the international life it is very rewarding and i'm pretty sure no matter who you are you're going to find your people